Falls from heights are the number one cause of death in construction. They also make up a third of the on-the-job deaths in the industry. Typically, fall protection videos focus on telling you how to work safely at heights. We thought it would be more fun just to show you the basics of fall protection. I'm Rachel Walla with Ally Safety, and in today's video, we're going to be going over the ABCDs of fall protection. So let's jump right into it. One of the first things you need to know about fall protection is the difference between fall arrest and fall restraint. Fall arrest allows you to fall. It just stops you from hitting the ground. But keep in mind, it doesn't stop you from hitting anything on your way down or swinging in to other objects once you've fallen. Fall restraint restrains you from reaching the edge, even when you really want to get there. That way, it makes it impossible to fall from heights. It's kind of like a human leash. To know which type of fall protection to use, the first step is to get a scope of work and do a quick hazard assessment. Doing a hazard assessment can sound tedious, but it's really just thinking before you start your work. Look at what the potential hazards can be and how you can reduce your risk. A good fall protection plan template can be an easy way to make sure you've thought of everything. Next, Plan out the ABCDs of fall protection. A is for anchorage points. When you're looking for an anchor point, a good rule of thumb is to kind of ask yourself if a three quarter ton pickup truck could hang from that point. Now that may sound like a lot, but remember the force of the momentum that's built up on a fall combined with our own weight can create a pretty big impact on the anchorage. These are crane pick points, and in this case, they would not be enough to be an anchorage point in the event of a fall. B is for body support. The point of a harness is to distribute the fall forces across the thighs, pelvis, chest, and shoulders to reduce the chance of injury. However, this only works if it's worn correctly. If not, you can seriously injure whatever area takes the full force of the fall. <clears throat> Gentlemen, you may want to pay particular attention to this, especially when you decide to wear the leg straps loose. C is for connectors. Connectors are anything that you use to connect yourself to the anchor point. This can include lanyards, self-retracting lanyards, hooks, or carabiners. The ABCs together make up your personal fall arrest system. The most important thing here is to remember to use it. Unfortunately, in 54% of fatalities, the workers had no access to a personal fall arrest system. Another 23 had access to a personal fall arrest system, but didn't use it. Once you know where the anchor point will be, get the distance from the anchor point to the ground. Then we can do a quick calculation to check the fall clearance. Calculating the fall clearance only takes a minute, and it's much better than wearing around your harness and lanyard all day long only to realize your lanyard was too long when you suddenly hit the ground. First, take the length of the lanyard. If it's a self-retracting lanyard, use the maximum free fall distance rather than the lanyard length. Add in any deceleration distance, the height of the average worker, and a safety factor of three to adjust for an improperly fit harness or any other miscalculations. In this case, the total fall distance could be up to 13 and a half feet. Since we know our anchor is at 22 feet, we know we're safe and won't hit the ground. Lastly, D is for descent and rescue. Rescue plans tend to get forgotten about, but remember, suspension trauma can occur in as little as 15 minutes due to limited circulation and blood pooling in the legs. Trauma straps can help maintain circulation and decrease discomfort while waiting for rescue. Even after the rescue, the rush of blood to the heart can cause serious injury and even death. So it's important to have a rescue plan in place that will get a response to you in about six minutes. Remember, calling 911 doesn't really count as a rescue plan because often they may not have the equipment to do a rescue at heights. Once you've gathered all your gear, you have a fall protection plan and a fall rescue plan, it's time to inspect your equipment. All equipment needs to be inspected before each use 
and at least once annually by a competent person. Inspect the four major components. Labels need to be present and fully legible. Hardware needs to be free from rust, pitting, and corrosion. Plastic components should not be damaged, broken, or distorted. There should be no damaged, loose, or broken stitches. Check the webbing for frays, cuts, tears, burns, paint, abrasions, or contaminants that could conceal the fibers. UV damage, like fading, also indicates wear and tear. Hold the harness by the D-ring and shake it out to get any tangles out of the straps. Slip the straps over your shoulders like you're putting on a jacket. When you're done, the D-ring needs to be in the center of your back between the shoulder blades. Put on the leg straps and tighten them. You want enough space that your hand can fit between your leg and the strap, but you want it to be tight enough that if you make a fist, you can't pull it back through. Connect the chest straps in the mid chest area. If this one isn't connected, it's gonna make it so that you can fall forward out of your harness. Also, you wanna make sure that these side straps are tight enough that if you fall, this chest strap won't be able to come up and suffocate you. Lastly, connect the waist strap snugly. After all the straps have been connected, make sure that it fits well but still gives you a full range of movement. Okay, now that we've gotten through the A, B, C, Ds, let's get to work. And that's how it's done. We're gonna make sure that he gets any care and follow-up that he needs. And then that fall protection that he wore that endured the fall is gonna be taken and re-inspected and recertified before the next use. For the other fall protection that was on site, it's gonna be stored safely until its next use. I hope this video helped to demonstrate some of the basics of fall protection for you. If it was helpful, please hit that like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and until the next time, I'll see you guys later.